Sarah Basile is joining us again from In Defense of Christians online at indefenseofchristians.org. Sarah, welcome back. Hello, Annie. Good morning. It's good to have you. And we are in the midst of Religious Freedom Week. Each day has a, a particular focus or theme related to religious freedom. And the focus for June 28th is a very important one for you all at IDC. Can you tell us about it? Yes, ma'am. So on the 28th, uh, the USCCB is celebrating um, by praying for Christians in Iraq. And as you know, and we've talked about several times on your show, is that IDC's mission was founded to combat the genocide of Christians in Iraq. So this day is very special for us, and we thought we'd take a couple minutes and let your uh, listeners know about the situation for Iraqi Christians uh, today. Yeah, absolutely. So can you give us the, the current state of affairs as it pertains to religious freedom in Iraq for Christians? Sure. So I want to first start by reminding um, your listeners that although the ISIS uh, caliphate has largely been defeated in Iraq, jihadists and smaller groups are still active and continue to terrorize the region as a whole. So we have little pockets of violence across the country that have really terrorized um, the Christian and non-Christian um, communities of the region. The past 20, 30 years have been very turbulent overall for Christians in the region, but not just because of war, because of political gridlock within the Iraqi government and just regional conflicts uh, overall. Uh, in the past uh, 20 years, Christians have left um, in alarming numbers. Around 80 percent of the Iraqi Christian population have left their ancestral homeland, and that's very alarming. Um, we know that they 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 left because of the genocide they faced, but they're continuing to leave because their towns nowadays are without water, electricity, and so on. And the inconsistency of the Iraqi government has caused the Christian population to leave and not come back in the numbers that they had before because they don't know if they're going to have electricity or water or food um, as they come back. And although um, IDC has worked extensively to get this um, taken care of, we, um, we, we work closely with a number of partner organizations and the United States government on getting them direct aid, it's still not enough, um, and we're hoping to continue that effort. We know that um, right now, despite these challenges, we're also facing um, the COVID-19 pandemic, I mean, as the rest of the world is, but they were specifically hard hit because they simply don't have the infrastructure, the healthcare infrastructure that we have in the West. And so um, the number of different forces has really hindered their growth and them coming back to the ancestral homelands, like I said. So it's very alarming, and um, we hope that this... Um, focus that um, uh, Pope Francis brought to Iraq with his uh, papal visit is something that uh, can shed light on the on the situation and can bring more international focus on getting aid to these uh, persecuted Christians. Can I ask something that might sound kind of odd? Um, I'm just curious about uh, the history here, um, because I, I, I mean, I don't want to say that that it would be better for Saddam Hussein to be in power. But was the situation for Christians in Iraq a little more secure under him? Um, so if you look at the numbers, I, at first, that's not a silly question. I understand exactly what you're saying. Um, what happened is that in the past hundred years, Christians have been facing the violence. So Saddam's sure. reign was nothing new. So the violence that we're talking about, the numbers that, that the decreasing numbers is nothing that happened in the 70s, 80s and 90s. It has been happening for the past century. Hmm. So as, as, um, the countries that we know today and imperialism and colonialism really took over these lands, the Christians were the first ones to be affected by these, um, these, uh, these uh, conflicts. And so we know that when there's regional instability, when there's uh, political gridlock, um, the minorities and the persecuted groups are really, they're the brunt of it, most of the brunt of it. So it's been for the past hundred years that we have these um, issues. In fact, to give you a little bit of a number, um, in the early 20th century, Christians, not only in Iraq, but across the Middle East, constituted about 20% of the population. So one in five people. Today, that number hovers around four to five percent. Hmm. So you can see the past hundred years have the violence of the past hundred years in the Middle East really has um, affected these communities more than anything. 
Certainly starting in sort of the World War One era. Now, um, going exactly. back to um, current times and and these efforts to sort of recover from the the just rampant persecution and, and martyrdom, really, that was happening in Iraq under ISIS. How have the rebuilding efforts been going for Christians who who are in Iraq, remained in Iraq, and, and the few that, that might be returning? Right. So I'll start with, in 2017, um, the IDC and our partner organizations advocated for first the recognition of the genocide. That's the number one thing you need to do to get aid pretty much unlocked to simplify this unlock in the State Department. So um, IDC worked with the Trump administration and Vice President Pence on making sure that that was accomplished, and that's um, the first step. So we did that in 2017. Since then, there's been direct aid to Christians in the region. Um, and that means direct uh, uh, sources or like water, water, food, electricity. However, the numbers that were there 20 years ago, for example, are simply not there anymore because there's no adequate security forces from the Iraqi government. And so what IDC and our partner organizations are advocating for is um, uh, security forces by the people that are living there. And so autonomous um, security forces to help alleviate some of the burden of the Iraqi government because they're simply not doing an adequate enough job for people, for Christians to come back. And so the current state is that they lack a lot of the resources, there's no security, and while there is aid coming, it's not enough to help alleviate the burden that they are facing as um, as a community there. And so um, while this is all uh, important first step, more work needs to um, needs to happen, more legislation to provide more aid and um, help these security forces um, grow and be self-sufficient is really the most important thing that we can do right now. Well, you mentioned the visit of Pope Francis to Iraq, and um, I mean, there were some of the most incredible images from the pontificate of Pope Francis came from that visit mm-hmm. alone. And and we certainly have the hope that, that there were many seeds planted that, that can bear fruit in the years to come. But Sarah, have we seen any more immediate effects, um, good effects from the visit of Pope Francis to Iraq? Um, and I'll, I'll start by saying this very simply. The fact that the international community now even knows there are Christians in Iraq is a very, very important first step. I can't tell you how many times you have a con- I've had a conversation with an individual that didn't even know there are Christians in Iraq. Wow. That's a very first important step. But when we go from there, when you have Pope Francis praying in a church that was bombed by ISIS only a couple years ago, that's not only powerful, but you have international uh, light on the situation. We know that this isn't an issue that's going to be solved overnight, but Pope Francis also donated a lot of money to the area. Um, He brought attention to this um, to this uh, situation, to this, this genocide. And so we're hoping that in the next couple months we'll see um, active participation in the rebuilding of the area. But it really starts with the Iraqi government um, having a stabilized and political gridlock to not overtake the region. It, it was only a couple of days ago, I remember seeing the story, They're, they continue to find um, burial grounds of victims of ISIS. This is, mm. this is something that we're going to see for generations to come. It's not something that we're going to um, that Iraq can overcome in a matter of a couple of years. And so um, shedding light on the issue, uh, helping them with any ways that we can through the United States government and through pray- praying for them and praying for this community are all things that we can do. Yes. And we are so grateful for the work that you do at In Defense of Christians to that end. If listeners want to get in touch, check out your organization, perhaps make a donation. Where can they find you? Uh, in defense of Christians.org, and I encourage all your listeners to also follow us on social media and reach out to us with any questions or comments that they have. We'd be more than happy to have these conversations with you. And you can find In Defense of Christians linked at sunrisemorningshow.com. Sarah Basile, thank you so much. Thank you, Annie. I appreciate your time. Absolutely. We appreciate yours.